Welcome to my map of Midsummer, a place where murder and bloodshed lurk in the most unexpected and seemingly peaceful places. This is the definitive guide to the real towns and villages that are used as the setting for Britain's most popular crime drama series and the places where the crimes were committed. This little village is typical of the many real places used by the production company to film Midsummer murders over the last 10 years. This is a map of Midsummer a county and villages which don't really exist. To make the series, the production company used real villages in the home counties to stage those famous murders. In this programme, we'll take a journey around the exact locations in Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire and Berkshire where episodes were filmed. And you can discover how the production team often used several locations to represent one fictional village. Plus, the man whose company gave us this remarkable drama series. The other day I was in the waterside at Bray having lunch and Michael Caine was sitting at a table. So I wrote on one of my visiting cards, Dear Michael Caine, would you fancy being the next victim in a Midsummer Murders? And he roared with laughter. He's put it in his wallet and maybe I could get him opposite Roger Moore. In this special show, we're going to let you into little secrets like that and show you some of the real places we used as locations in the killing fields of Midsummer Murders. We'll be calling in to the butcher's shop, which hides a meaty secret. The pub, which features in no less than five episodes. The house, which turned into a hotel, but just for a day. And stopping off at a very dangerous village green. That was my screen wife, Joyce, getting a very unpleasant shock here on this very village green. Now, for the past oh, 10, 11 years, I've been knocking on cottage doors, staring murder in the face as Detective Chief Inspector Barnaby from Corston CID. Now, of course, behind every successful man, there's a surprised woman. And my screen wife, Joyce, played by Jane Wymark, has been very supportive of him in his investigations. She's consigned more dinners to the bin than you can shake a stick at. And she's here with me today. Recognise the place? I think I do, just about. We've got to know this part of Buckinghamshire really rather well in the last few years, haven't we, John? Indeed we have. Let's take a bit of a walk. OK. How English it all is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And today, we're going to let you into a few of the trade secrets, show you where the real Midsummer is. Of course, on screen, Midsummer is a land of beautiful cottages, lovely gardens, village cricket side, there'll be a choir singing in the church. And more often than not, there'll be the village fate on the village green. The series is set in villages of Bucks and Oxfordshire, starting here, the Lee, in Buckinghamshire. This very village green is where it all started with our first episode, The Killings of Badger's Drift. Is that the big bad policeman? Yeah, Inspector Barnaby. He doesn't have a blue light on his car. Uh, I wish he hadn't come. Hold it. Just like that. Michael? I love that look. Right now. It's the eyes. Really? Yes. Sad and soft. Just a little bit of fear. In fact, the Lee was so popular with the production team that we came back here oh, time and time again. And the, the cock and rabbit over there, you get a good pint in there, I tell you. That was the scene where my sergeant, Troy, was totally taken in by a couple of bogus detectives in Painted in Blood. Hello, sir. Uh, this is uh, James Nolan, Simon Buckley, Detective Chief Inspector Barnaby. Heard a lot about you, sir. Perhaps I could buy you a drink, sir. Uh, no, thanks. Not at the minute. Could I have a word, please, Troy? Oh, sir, how's it going on Operation, um, what's it called? Pond Life. Yeah, that's it. Fine, thank you. Good show, sir. It's very important for the community, that sort of policing. Yes. Yes, it is. Of course, the ever-reliable Barnaby 
puts those two upstarts in their place by the end of the episode. But back to Badger's Drift. Our location manager just couldn't keep us away from this perfectly English village green. Richard! I was hoping to run into you. Not literally. Join me in the heart of Corston, the town where the Barnabys live, in just a minute. Still to come, the house that was rebuilt for a very poisonous pair of villains. Treading the boards with the locals who turned into midsummer extras, and we'll find out the real location of the headquarters of the Corston police. Coming up on Map of Midsummer Murders, the Wallingford Theatre that hit the big time. More secrets from the boss, the executive producer. You know, we've had four police station interiors and exteriors. Nobody's written in and said they're all different. We've had four Barnaby's houses. They're all similar, but nobody's noticed. And about five path labs. And get held up at a bank raid on a sleepy Buckinghamshire High Street. Welcome back to our Map of Midsummer Murders, an ITV3 exclusive going deep into Midsummer Country to uncover some of the locations used in those lovely murders. Now it's over to a real Buckinghamshire village called The Lee, which was the setting for no less than three episodes of Midsummer Murders. The original title for the series was going to be Barnaby. It was Anthony Horowitz who suggested calling it Midsummer Murders. However, Anthony was so taken with the Lee that he actually set the climax of Death Shadow right here at the village fate. <laughs> it's a dangerous place to live, Midsummer. And Barnaby's had to develop a very strong stomach over the years. You know, Tom, I may have to give up this game. You know you're too old when they start getting to you. That bad, is it? Rather worse. So where is it then, the body? Most of it's in the hall. The head bounced into the living room. I suppose it could have been carried there. As bad as that. After you. Next, on our tour of the actual film locations of Midsummer Murders, we travel to the village of Blidlow in Buckinghamshire, which features in no less than eight episodes, including Death's Shadow, Dead Man's Eleven, and A Worm in the Bud. Die-hard fans may remember this church from the killings at Badger's Drift. It was the setting for poor Emily Simpson's funeral. For as much as has pleased Almighty God of his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear sister here departed, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Dennis and Iris Rainbow, an eccentric couple, mother and son, lived in Badger's Drift. Dennis? Oh, come on, Mummy, it's the talk of the whole village ever since the shooting. He was a funeral director with a rather unusual form of transport. Oh, yeah, lovely black Porsche with a unique number plate. And Richard Can had a fun time with that part. Because the joke was, he couldn't actually drive, and so the production crew had to push the car out of shot at the end of the scene. <laughs> well, what can I do for you, Mr. Rainbird? I was wondering if I could take her, the deceased. Oh, I'm afraid that won't be possible for a little while. Oh, so you do suspect some naughtiness. It was her neck, I understand. Who told you that? Oh, come on, everyone knows by now. It's that sort of village. Well, you can't have the body yet, all right? Sir? Oh. I see you've got a right constable there. You let me know when you're ready for me. See the car? Yes. You wouldn't have thought they were so well paid, would you? Undertakers. You remember the Rainbird's house? 
It had a turret on top where Iris stood and spied on all her neighbours. Yeah, and she kept a diary, didn't she? A log of all the comings and goings in the village. And that proved to be a vital clue at the end of the story. But I mustn't give too much away.